Placencia cigars. Perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. What's up, Stogie Geeks listeners? Joe Zempa here, a.k.a. Joe Hollywood, a.k.a. the Italian Stanley, telling you about a little giveaway that we have going on. We've teamed up with our sponsor, J.C. Newman, this year to give back to the Stogie Geeks listener. They've been such an awesome partner so far. They've decided to give away one Diamond Crown humidor per quarter to the winner that they choose. All you got to do is... Log on to stogiegeeks.com forward slash diamond crown. Click on the enter to win button. It's really that easy. So if you're smart and you want an awesome humidor for your home collection, go to our website, stogiegeeks.com. Find that banner ad right on top. Click on it and register to win that humidor. Good luck. Welcome back to episode 314 of Stogie Geeks. This is the second segment. Before I introduce our guest, I want to... Encourage the Stogie, Stogie Geeks listeners to let you know that if you go to Sto- stogiegeeks.com and click on the McAuliffe logo, they're looking for some brand ambassadors. They're bringing back the brand ambassador program. Finally, a believer in the brand ambassador program. They're bringing it back. They're looking for Stogie Geeks listeners only to jump on, represent your state, your region. I don't know how it's being divided, but you can become a brand ambassador for McAuliffe Cigars. Here are some of the benefits. You get the brand ambassador coin. Challenge coin. Challenge accepted. You also get uh, access to a private Facebook membership that lets them know of promotions that you can uh, go out there and promote. They'll also educate you with the new rules of the ambassador program since our awesome industry is being regulated by everyone who doesn't smoke cigars. That's another episode. We, uh, we have limited time here, so I will not rant on that one other than stop limiting us and stay out of businesses. Anyway, you also have uh, exclusive content uh, contest for ambassadors. You get 25% discount on all swag items. Can't discount cigars. It's another regulations. But you get a 25% discount on some swag, and you get some behind-the-scenes view of what goes on over at McAuliffe Cigars. Check them out. All you got to do is go to stogiegeeks.com forward slash McAuliffe Cigars or go to, no, I'm sorry, go to McAuliffeCigars.com forward slash Geeks or go to Stogie Geeks and click on that uh, logo. McAuliffe Cigars, 14 blends available in 44 different sizes. Check them out. Now, Drew and I have the chance to interview Storm Bowen, legend. He is the chair for Cigars for Warriors program. Hopefully you've seen that in your local brick-and-mortar shop. We are going to talk about what that program is. Storm is retired from the U.S. Army in 2014. He's owner of the famous Cats Group over on Facebook. He's also founder for DirtyCats.org and the Cats Cigar Festival. And he held positions on the Advisory Council on Ethics. For the great big state of Texas. Storm, welcome to the show. I appreciate it, Joe. Thank you for having us on. Uh, from that introduction, I have so much I want to talk to you about. <laughs> okay. Like, like seriously, like it's funny because I cannot go into a brick and mortar shop and have either the Cats Forum or Cigars for Warriors be somewhat of a conversation as uh, uh, for some of the different patrons uh, there as well. So uh, I do want to get into that, but I also want to take the time out to, to first and foremost, thank you for your service. Uh, my father is retired Navy. I don't want to get in an Ar- Army Navy fight, right? Uh, he wouldn't let us join the military. That's a long story. Uh, when I was a junior and I came home with the Navy flyer because I wanted to be with my father, like my father, and he, long story pain this, he said, oh, hell no, you're going to college. Anyway, uh, you know, uh, I want to thank you for your service because I do know 
the uh, firsthand sacrifice that m military families go through uh, and allow us to do super cool stuff here in the United States, like stop businesses, smoke cigars, uh, <clears throat> everything underneath the sun that we can do in this awesome country, and yet people don't take advantage of it. But again, that's another show for another time. Uh, but I do want to personally thank you for your service. I appreciate it very much, Joe. You know, I'm, I'm I'm sure that the you know the the it just it just goes on and on with with sacrifice that that military families uh, go through. So again, um, cigars for warriors, near and dear to your heart. How did you get that started? And take, I mean, I am pretty sure that 88 percent that's my number um, the, of the Stogie Geeks audience knows about the program. But tell us some stuff on how it got started and and maybe some stuff that they didn't know. Uh, and, uh, truthfully, it was kind of an accident. Um, I was just trying to learn a lot more about cigars and discovered uh, Facebook cigar groups. Back in the days, uh, there was only on Facebook either brand or retail uh, desire of having a, a web a group. And, you know, started asking questions and usually ask, always asked the wrong questions. Made some decent friends and I uh, got into conversation with one of them who's a retired submariner, Navy. And uh, we were visiting about what a cigar meant on a deployment to each of us. And it was really interesting that the same uh, emotions, the same feelings, the same benefits were the same between us and multi-generations. I mean, he was in the submariners <laughs> back when it was there was no nuclear subs. So that was quite a while back. Mm. And, uh, you know, and I was just coming back from uh iraq afghanistan etc and so we were talking about the different meanings but it was so neat that it was so much of the same feelings and same emotions um and what that meant to us and uh, when i was deployed i thought it was pretty unique uh that i would take my rank off after a really bad day and me and my guys would smoke a cigar and they knew for the next hour and a half two hours they could literally say anything they wanted to get anything off their chest call me names whatever there was no repercussions and come to find out that wasn't remotely uh unique uh even to this day they've it's been expanded to such a level that it's really fascinating that uh you know all military guys we got to organize everything so uh we now have massive cigar communities within the military they'll have uh, present for example the taliban cigar club and they have you know, 30, 40 chapters all over the United States. They have, uh, you know, multi-branch uh, clubs. They have clubs with, with uh, their contractors embedded, and they have them all over the country, or all over the world, truthfully. And it's so, and they, it's, their philosophy is pretty much the same thing. Most of them have a no rank, uh, no blouse even uh, policy. So you go in, it's, it's about the cigar. It's about uh, stepping down for a couple hours and, uh Remembering what home is, remembering why we're there. Um, mm -hmm. And it's not like you can go down to the local 7-Eleven <laughs> to get, you know, something that's going to help benefit your, you know, your stress. Um, not like you can play a sport. You know, so the stress, your stress reduction options are very limited. And, mm -hmm. you know, so I was, that was one of the things we started talking about doing, just sending a couple of boxes a month. And uh, we found out there was another guy actually doing it. And, to make a very, very long story short, he turned out to be uh, less than honest. Um, so the volunteers I had accumulated uh, using CATS as a platform, we decided to start our own charity. Um, you know, I asked him, and I, originally I was not going to do it because of uh, the last individual I actually bought into, and I felt pretty guilty because I spent about, we spent about three months with them and uh, used our names to get donations, et cetera. And one of our, uh, who is our last co-founder left, her name is Elaine DeBonato, had called me and said, hey, I would think we should do this. The, and her exact words was, the mission is too beautiful for us not to do. And that stuck in my head. And my wife, she thought it was a good idea. Uh, she said, it's the most excitement I've seen since you uh, got injured. So why don't you do it? So I said, we got three rules in. We go hard, we go fast. Um, we do it by the book and I don't want to be in charge of anything. <laughs> so, I <ended> up, <laughs> so you accomplished two of the three, it looks like <laughs> right, we, we, we two of the three. And, uh, you know, 
I, I understand why they voted me as the CEO, but uh, because I was, you know, I was on medical when I was still in the army, which is, just, you know, just as funny thinking about it. I was still in the military, but I was actually on medical and I wasn't doing anything and I knew I was retiring permanently. So it was, you know, in the day, it was probably a smart idea just because I had more free time than rest. Um, great volunteers, great guys that helped start the, the charity. There were seven of us. Um, like I said, Lane's our last one. Uh, just because it is a lot of pressure. Um, people don't realize it takes a lot of people to get some, what sounds like a simple mission, the logistics can be pretty uh, heavy-handed, especially when you have no actual paid employees. Mm. Um, so which is what we're proud of, is that we can tell everybody where all the money goes to. Um, but there is, there's definitely negatives to not having paid employees uh, where you can't, you know, you had to tell a volunteer, hey, pretty please. I know it's going to take you 15 minutes for the next three months. Could you get it done? Whereas an employee, you could say, get it done or you're fired. Mm. Uh, that would be, you know, that would be fun. But nonetheless, we've had amazing people. And our rule has always been, and once you, you, you know, something changes in life, you get married, you get divorced, you have a kid, you know, job, those stressors uh, hit pretty hard and fast. So we've always had a rule, once that hits, you, you know, freely step down with no recrimin recrimination that that goes all the way down to our event coordinators um something we're real proud of is most most of our volunteers have done that um i'm a stat guy so i've studied a lot on on volunteers and micro volunteerism um and it's fascinating that they say that a great volunteer will last you between 90 to 120 days mm -hmm. we've had some of our volunteers have been with us since 2012 so while we may be the most not politically correct charity on the planet, we're very proud to say we're the most transparent and we have, like I said, dedicated uh, supporters since day one. And that's, that's to me every day still surprises me and shocks me. And I'm very honored by the, the faith that our volunteers give our, our board to lead us and where we're going. Um, we also have a philosophy of the higher up in the, in the organization to go, our whole job is support those who are doing the real work like our event coordinators uh those are the those guys those men and women are the backbone of cigars for warriors especially since uh 2016 when the fda crushed us um mm. at one point we were shipping between 40 and 45 thousand cigars every single month from a you know i would say 80 percent of donations were coming from our manufacturers mm. um that hurt us because as a, you know, by January, 2017, that dried up to zero. Mm. Uh, so we had to refocus our whole energy and we put a lot more focus. Like you said, you see us in a ton of cigar shops. Um, we're probably in 85% of the cigar shops in the United States. If they're doing the program, right. Sure. You should see, uh, you should see a humidor sitting near the, the cashier box. We have some shops that go all in and they'll create a warrior's wall. And uh, they'll put a base of, you know, some kind of cabinet or uh, table with a nice humidor sitting on it with a wall full of pictures of guys, uh, military smoking cigars while they're in combat, you know, maybe a shadow box, maybe a U.S. flag, et cetera. Mm. Um, those guys are pretty neat to see those walls and how they decorate them. Um, we got a, in fact, we got a few competitions going to start in 2020 just dealing with that area. That's awesome. But as far as I, as far as how we started, you know, that's that's pretty much the, the short end of the stick. Uh, we did have a, I always have a, I always think it's pretty funny. Our first board member me meeting, I said, we need a small, we need a, a long term goal for the first year, but it needs to be slightly impossible. And we're pretty much using Google Hangouts like we're doing Zoom today. And yeah. we're looking at, because none of us are in the same city, same state mostly, we're all over the United States. In fact, our first vice chair was in Afghanistan um, mm. and Matt Dorman. And so we were, we had no idea. And I could just see everybody's blank expressions. So I just threw out the number 800 cigars in one year. And I got cussed out, yelled at, how is that going to be possible? We're going to get 800 cigars. How are we going to ship 800 cigars? We're going to get the money. Who? How are we going to get the word out, et cetera, et cetera. And I said, well, that's why it's slightly impossible goal. Well, um, the first year we ended up shipping out 92,600 cigars. Mm. So we, we kind of broke our, our goal by a little bit. 
In fact, <laughs> the first month we shipped out 865 cigars. So in our very first month of existence, we, we broke the records. Or we broke our goals by far. So I, I always enjoy telling that story because that came, that didn't come from the manufacturers the first, you know, three, four months. That came from the Facebook supporters. Right. Which is where we started. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's the very short story, even though it sounded long. No, uh, no, no, no. You, 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 you brought up a ton of points that I want to review. Um, but before I jump in and start picking your brain and whatnot, Drew, you have a question you want to open up with? No, I was just going to comment that, you know, that just shows our true patriotism here in our country. I mean, for, for them to go, you know, from getting cigars from manufacturers to then, you know, going down to zero and then just going out and, you know, basically, you know, getting every American that steps into a brick and mortar involved. And they, they'll do it involuntarily, I, you know, voluntarily. I mean, I, I remember the first one I went to uh, back at under, underground, uh, underground Cigars over here with these guys, and I met Storm for the first time. And I'll tell you, just, just the, to, to talk with some of the veterans that were there, uh, some of the guys drove down as far as, like, way west Texas. Uh, I think one guy came from somewhere in, I want to say, Arizona and, and – uh, it, it was just awesome, you know, and it's just a neat story. And uh, as far as hearing their story and hearing about how these cigars really played a, a, a pivotal point in their lives in the military. And so, you know, for me, uh, I, I, I'm I'm there with these guys. So just wanted to say that uh, when you attend one of these functions, it's just absolutely uh, phenomenal. And the people you meet, people that come up to us and just start talking, it's just it's just wonderful. Yeah, you know, and I get burned out a lot, as you can imagine, because uh, it wasn't going to be the two, three hour hobby we, we originally thought it was going to be a week or a month, even. Uh, it turned out very quickly 40, 60 hours a week. Um, oh, so yeah. it, it, it could, I could get burned out pretty quickly, but usually I've been blessed that almost every time that's happened, I run into one of our recipients. And once I hear these stories from these recipients, what it meant to them, you know, we would start this just a way of saying thank you. We had no idea in a million years that something as simple as a cigar would take on a deeper meeting. I mean, just saying it out loud always sounds a little bit propagandist, but mm -hmm. um, the, the, the stuff that these guys have said to us and women um, has been what kept me motivated. I mean, hell, I, we've had volunteer people just standing around listening to these stories when the recipients come out and start telling them what it meant to them and people literally volunteer right then and there because it, it oh, yeah. meant something, you know, they heard the deep meanings of what that cigar meant to them. And in, in a lot of cases, it's an individual, uh, how, how it made them feel, uh, what it meant to them when it happened. Um, I mean, some pretty intense stories for something as simple as a cigar. Again, mm. as starting out a simple way of saying, thank you. Um, yeah. you know, like you were talking about, we, we flipped the script in 2017. Now there's always, I always look for a silver lining to everything. I try to anyway. Um, I always expect and plan for the worst and I'm very excited when it doesn't happen. And, uh, we were, we were planning pretty heavily on the FDA trying to knowing what we're going to do once it happened. And so we put a lot more emphasis on our big festivals and our big, big events made more individualized cfw events um and this and the stores and those clientele the stores have really stepped up in an amazing way so we're shipping about i would say 15 20 000 premium cigars every single month now um another thing that's very important to realize is that they have to request those cigars not a, a lot of people realize that's something very important uh if you were in the military you'll understand that reason why because if, you, if I just send it to a random unit, it's going to end up in some sergeant major's tent somewhere in the back or colonel or whatever. <laughs> we, have, we want to make sure everybody gets a chance. And so it doesn't matter what your rank is, but I will yeah. say this. We've never had a, a colonel uh, ever request. I think the highest ranking individual we've ever had request is a major. And that's, and then that's not to say you know, we, can, we can't have 50 majors next month requesting. And it's just that we're very proud of a lot of our enlisted, lower enlisted are getting the products. Uh, those are the men and women who are the backbone of the military. They're the ones doing the heavy lifting. For sure. Um, so oh, yeah. very proud of that. Now, the silver lining is we able to send um, coffee, video games, 
magazines, cutters, lighters, uh, yep. some swag. So it's been pretty cool to be able to send that, the, the other stuff. Um, and, and we know what the number one item is that they requested because we did a three-year survey. We didn't do a 15-minute CNN survey. We did a three-year survey to find out <laughs> what truly is the most requested item. Okay. And we found out, didn't matter what region, uh, what deployment, we found out cigars are number one by far. And depending on the area, and we finished our survey around 2015, uh, late 2014, and um, the number two and number three was coffee and video games, which uh, I always yeah. think is fun. Depending on where they were, which one was more important. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we, we now are able to ship out all three of those. Uh, we can't, we don't promise video games and coffee yet uh, because it's not consistent donations yet, mm. but we're very, very close um, of getting consistent donations on a monthly basis from a couple of coffee companies. Uh, but none of them have, have given us the hundred percent green light. So all those donations, again, coming from individuals that'll ship us, you know, a pound of boutique coffee and we'll break it down to, you know, two, three ounces, that way they have a couple of pots. Um, right. Our goal would, I'd love to be able to send six to 10 ounces for every box of Boti coffee. I mean, even, you know, Folgers, I would, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to send that out. Now, I'm not a coffee guy, so, you know, if y'all start asking questions about what is a Boti coffee, I'm going to lie to you because I really don't know. Um, I was <laughs> I was a guy in the military, always drank Diet Coke. That was my crack. Uh, so... Um, but we're very proud of the fact that we're able to do that. We have video game uh, groups, uh, clubs that send us video games. So that's pretty cool. Again, it's coming from the regular Joe on the street that, as you said, is very patriotic patriot, patriotic, and to feel about the program and, and feel about our troops. Um, so, again, that's the, that's the box. That's what people want to know what's in it. They want to know how it's requested. Um, again, it's going to the individual person. Now, we do send so many of them out. And these guys are just blown away when they get the box. That repeatedly, I've heard. Well, I just shared it with my whole company. We had so many cigars. It was great. We had a we had two or three great nights. Um, or, you know, just again, the stories are just all over the place, but they're all phenomenal stories just to hear them. So, if you ever get a chance, actually, you know, dig down and ask these questions to these men and women, and you'll be, you know, very pleasantly surprised at the neat stories you'll get from it. You know, something from all three of us and your listeners that cigars are a passion to all of us. But to see the meaning of what it is for these men and women overseas, um, that's really what it takes that leaf that we're all proud of being associated with and really gives it a stronger meaning. And it's just like when we all meet up at, at cigar shops, but intensified by a thousand. Sure. Oh, yeah. uh, probably more. Sure. It's probably more because, you know, like you said, it's not like they can just jumping a ride after work and go to your local brick and mortar shop and kick kick back and relax and catch a sports game or the news. I don't even know why the frick you would watch that. But anyway, right, you know, uh, you know, it, it, they don't have that luxury, right? You're doing it in a camp under whatever situation that you're in and you're trying to take a couple hours out to find some thing or some event or some experience that reminds them of home or reminds them of just what it is like to not live on edge, especially if you're in a combat zone, uh, you know, and, and it's just, it's crazy. It, it's, uh, I was not aware of the volume that you ship uh, there when you said that, nine, that 80, 90,000 uh, of that and you broke your goal. That, that's crazy. And I'm, and I'm sure with the momentum that you have, it's going to continue to grow. And now that you're branching out, even though it's under the Cigars for Warriors umbrella, but you're branching out into other things that they need, is a magazine. I mean, shit, we, we've all picked up a magazine, uh, you know, on our cadence and just thumbed through it of our interest. And, you know, again, it reminds them of stuff at home because, you know, if they're into, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, pop culture or if they're into hot rods or if they're into guitars or whatever they're into again they can't just go to freaking cvs and and yo can i get the latest uh you know people or or you know guitar world or whatever it just, it just doesn't work like that you know and they're always again depending on where they are 
you're always on alert, you know, and, and, and uh, I've followed, I've had the experience of interviewing uh, ambassadors here for the Rhode Island chapter um, uh, on my cigar radio show back in 2015, 2016 era. Um, they're pre me coming to Stogie Geeks and, you know, I, I was amazed. And so I've always followed the, them on Facebook and I want to encourage the Stogie, the Stogie Geeks listeners, go to cigarsforwarriors.org, log, log in, tap into their social media, follow them. It's so awesome to see a group of troops sharing their experience with that and just you know and it shows up in your feed and you're just like yeah man that's super cool that that they're out there having their little little tiny minute slice of happiness while we can do this day in and day out sitting here in the states you know i have i have so many questions for you okay. uh, I, Don't I, have, me. I i have so many questions for you um uh i want to take some time and talk about the FDA changes, you don't have to go into too much detail. We all hear it, show in, show out. But what was, like, the biggest obstacle that you had to cross in 2016 to change and pivot the way that you only collect cigars, but how also the retail is going to that? Because I, it wants to tear into my next question so that the Story Geeks listener who's listening to this either on video or audio can kind of follow along of how... If you go to your local brick and mortar shop and you see a little box with the logo Cigars for Warriors or a little humidor or a big wall, a military wall in shops, which I think they should all do. I'll get to that. That's my second part question, right? Right there. Um, you know, at, like I want the Story Geeks listener to now be cognizant. So when they walk into the brick and mortar shop, they're like, I've heard that organization I either want to participate or I want to donate or I want to log on to social media or I want to get involved. So take us through those challenges. And then from there, if we could pivot to these walls uh, and and how important it is for the retailers. This is a because re retailers do listen to the show as well. I want them to have the buy-in as well. It's not just, hey, go to scottsforwarriors.org, Giving Tuesday is happening, donate there. It's not that at all. It, it's a whole... It's a whole involvement that I think retailers should say, hey, you know, if they're going to be in, be all in, right? Build a wall, build a mural. It doesn't have to, you know, you don't have to repaint a wall and, 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 and recreate that. But, you know, like if, if I owned a shop, I would have a humidor, right? Uh, 50 count, big humidor on the desktop. A couple of flags, you know what I mean? If I was retired military, I would have that flag, of course, because I know how our house is decorated navy when, when I go to my parents' house, right? You know, <laughs> and all that stuff. Like, like, I would have that and be more involved to bring more, more awareness. But what are those challenges? And if you could kind of answer <laughs> all, all of that. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you nailed it on the head. Our initial challenge is we lost our manufacturer donations. Right. Now, that's not to say that we lost 100%. Uh, there's a, plenty of loopholes sure. um, to get around if they really want to. And we have several companies that really want to. Um, you just saw Avante just donated their third time this last year, uh, over 15,000 cigars each, um, which is an insane amount of cigars when you think about it. <laughs> um, again, but our primary focus has been, again, back to our donation centers. And, you know, the nice thing about Cigars for Wars, and some of we've always been proud of, we have – I have two philosophies that I try to do how I figure out things. Number one is always checks and balances. Um, you know, I don't even want the good guy to have temptations of doing something wrong. So we, we do try to do in, as much as we can in a volunteer world, uh, strong checks and balances. So we have a donation center program. And if they follow the program, they'll actually make money. So our number two, my number two philosophy is, is that our partners, whoever that is, if that guy donates a cigar, he or she is a partner. Uh, when that store gets on board as a donation center, they're a partner. If that manufacturer gets on board to do something for us, they're a partner. Um, and I want our partners to come out ahead. Um, I want a donation center to make, come out ahead more than CFW because in a day, if that happens, the store grows and our donations grow. It's a it's a nice quid pro quo. It's a symbiotic relationship. Truthfully, and if you're not making money off CFW, you're doing something absolutely wrong. 
And so a lot of the challenges are getting the individual stores to follow the program. Or we'll have a, a manager that loves the program, but he or she uh, left the store to do you know bigger, greater things. And a new person will come in, not know what it is, and they'll uh, it, it goes to the wayside. Yep. Uh, and so, and then we have right now on the books 522 donation centers. But there's probably, you know, truthfully, 85% of that are doing the program right or even remembering that, they're, that they are doing the program. But if you're doing the program right and you're following the simple rules, um, you're going to be making a lot of money. And, you know, that's a good thing. I've had a lot of owners say, that's not why I want to do this. But at the end of the day, I want you to make money because that means we're going to have a really nice long-term relationship. Sure. Um, you know, it's an, so it's it's designed that way. Uh, but it's, that's been challenges. You know, I, I have a, my biggest pet peeve where I'll pull someone from the program is I walk in the store if I see a shoebox or not. You know, I, this is not a mom and pops program. Uh, we've been around, like I said, since 2012. Uh, in J- July of this year, we just broke a million cigars shipped out, which is something I never in a million years would have ever dreamed of. Um, so that's insane amount, amount of cigars. Um, and if, so, uh, we, we want to, and plus we, if you donate a cigar, you sh- that store should have respect for that cigar. That's a big thing for me is showing that donor, that customer that bought a cigar out of your shop and donated it, show the respect and put it in a humidor. Um, and after years and years of talking to different shop owners, different, you know, every store is different. Some stores are just packed. I mean, they got all the walls covered with cabinets. They got no counter space. So, you know, those become challenges to work around. And, uh, and we find ways. I mean, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, but typically, the every one of these stores said, you know, if you put anything smaller than a 300 count humidor, people are going to ignore it or, your, or the mentality of seeing it something smaller. It's, it's not that important. It's a mom and pops program. Um, my cigar is never going to actually make it to the troops. Why should I donate, et cetera? But if you show it's an actual program and that you have respect behind it and you're following the rules in it, your customers are going to donate. Mm-hmm. And guess what? Mm-hmm. You're going to be making money because those cigars are coming from somewhere. Right. Even if they're bringing them from home, you want them to bring them from home. Yeah, you know, we've always been taught, you know, the biggest thing to do is don't ever bring your cigars from home and smoke them in the shop. That's always been, you know, that's a pretty disrespectful rule. Unless you're buying a cigar and you're going to smoke that one later and you bring your own. But just bring your own. But a lot of guys are learning that they can bring their own cigars and donate them. And during big events we have, uh, like the one that, that Joe was at, um, we uh, those guys get benefits for donating cigars. We'll do raffles. We'll actually give you raffle tickets for your cigars that are donated. Um, so that's pretty fun doing that as well because, again, those cigars equate to money in those, those donation centers' pockets. Even if not something they didn't buy that day, in the long run, they gotta still come back to fill that humidor up. Because I don't know about you guys, when my humidor gets a little space, I want to fill it up. Yep. Uh, and most cigar guys and gals are exactly the same way. So there's ways to make money. So, um, and then it, just good communications. We have uh, our greatest weakness has always been we don't have that midline supervisor position calling the donation centers every day. How are you doing? Calling the volunteers. How are you doing? Sometimes these these uh, individuals and in shops need that, you know, pat on the butt, that you know, vice, that lifeline, etc. Um, we were working very hard on changing some of those challenges, uh, but those are our biggest challenges. Just that one area of, of communications, and we have a lot of volunteers that do call a lot of shops, but we're trying to fix it where we have some better programs. And of course, uh, you know, our website's always a challenge just because we, you know, we go through a lot of volunteers for the website. So we're working on changing that greatly. And it's going to fit a program that we initiated last February called the Patriot Programs Initiative. And it's basically a way that we brought our whole charity organization to one large program with uh, sub sub programs within it. And uh, we're pretty excited about some of the stuff that's going to come out. But again, it, it's going to take that website uh, app that's going to make it happen right. But we have, we're going to have a followers program. We call it the Calvary. Um, we have a dignitaries program already up and running, which is our, you know, celebrities, de facto people, large followings that 
support CFW and they just promote us as much as they can. Like Shorty Rossi um, from the Pit Boss, um, John Drew with the Drew Estate, uh, Delicia Cigar Vixen, et cetera, and a few others that have that following that love to promote cigars for warriors. And so these programs are great, We're just, but they're, you know, with a volunteer program, what may take me and Joe at a, at a desk that we work 40 hours a week, um, we could get that done in a month or two. It takes in a volunteer program. We're looking at six months, a year, year and a half to get some of the stuff done. So that, you know, uh, that could be a challenge, especially as a new volunteer you're coming in and all of us are just, we all have the same mentality. We're going to volunteer. We're going to, we're going to come. We got new ideas. We're going to change the world. And it gets frustrating sometimes when things don't change overnight. For sure. Um, For sure. So that's been some of our challenges. Um, but on the flip side of that, some the biggest thing is bless me is is our volunteers. That's another way it's kept me going is meeting and working with our volunteers all over the United States. Um, it's been a amazing journey to to meet these people, to get to know them as family. Uh, I spend a night a lot of these individuals' house as because we travel, but we pay our own way to go everywhere. Um, we don't again we don't get paid to do this job. It's all volunteer work. So you see guys flying in from Miami to come work an event in Texas. That's insane. And th that person deserves, you know, kudos, even though they're not doing it for that. They they're doing it because they believe in the cause. Mm -hmm. You'll be the last person to know that they actually, you know, drove in three, four hours, six hours, eight hours, flew in to support a major festival or event. Um, and it's always fascinating. Even though I do it, I, I, like I said, I consider myself blessed because I'm retired and I, can able to do this. Um, but do you have other people who are working 40 hours a week, 60 hours a week, then turn around that family, they have three, four kids. Um, they're still volunteering five, six, seven, eight hours a week. Um, so having that faith of these volunteers, again, like I said, family, it's, it's been an amazing journey to get to know these people that are willing to sacrifice so much for our troops. Now, people a lot of times ask me my personal reasons why I do it. I have a secondary mission. Um, as long as Cigars for Warriors is going out and we're doing, we're pushing and people are seeing it, it reminds the people in the United States that we still have men and women, a lot of men and women deployed still. People think, oh, we have a huge drawdown in Iraq. They have nobody in Iraq, you know, which is not exactly true, but um, if you depend on what news station you listen to. Uh, we still have a ton of troops in Afghanistan. We have troops in Korea. Uh, we have troops all over the world that are deployed. And we don't send the guys, men and women, are stationed, but we do send them to, if they're deployed. So I guess one of the things I forgot to tell you earlier is that um, our priorities, our first priority is always combat zone, and our second priority is long-term deployments and floats. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Floats are being with the Navy, the Marines, or any, any man or woman who's out there on the ocean. I spent uh, two weeks in the ocean on a ship, and I realized that um, I, I would have never been a good Navy guy. That was the most miserable two weeks of my life. <laughs> so if any, any man and woman is, is on a ship for three months, by God, they deserve a cigar or six. Sure, and, uh, sure. You know, and then we, we have sort of a classification. While Africa's been declassified, it's not a combat zone, even though there's some, definitely some pretty nasty areas. Uh, sometimes you leave that country, you have to be in, and uh, you have to be quarantined for a couple of weeks. If, if you're being quarantined, you're gonna you deserve a damn cigar. Right. I don't care what the government calls it a combat zone or not. So we'll we'll call you know Africa. We'll put them on first priority instead of being on a second priority. And the priorities are all because of stock. Um, you know, so we don't always have the stock that we want, but as we have the stock, those priorities get taken care of. Um, so I think I answered most of your questions just now. No, you did. You did. Uh, you actually pivoted into my other question is shipping must be a logistical nightmare. Not only because correct me if I'm wrong, the organization, right? You got you guys are, are an organization. 501c3. It's nonprofit. You you have to ship this stuff. Shipping must be. And a tremendous expense, no? Yeah, we're running an average ten to twelve thousand dollars a month. Sure, yeah, and that's and I would say eighty five percent of that's shipping. 
Yeah. The other 15% are all the other little nickel and diamond stuff that we get done. And right. we, we've been blessed last year that we were able to put a little bit more money into um, marketing, which we've never able to had the ability or justification. Um, I, you know, we are, we run in what we call an 18 month expense calendar. Mm -hmm. If we have 18 months of what our highest six months have ever been, and we have that 18 months, I can use anything extra to do stuff that makes it gr the charity grow. Yep. Uh, but if we don't have that 18 months of shipping monies. We don't touch any of the donations. So that's how we do. We always want to make sure we have a year and a half of basically the ability to keep going. Yep. Um, and after that, then I can take some of that money. We'll, you know, we have, and we have a lot of checks and balances. We have uh, executive committee that meets every single week. Um, the board meets once a month and we have a finance committee that once executive committee approves something, then it, and it costs money it has to go to the finance committee. Um, you know, so it's, while there's red tape in it, it's not as much as a lot of organizations have, but I am proud of the red tape because again, it's a checks and balance. Um, the way we built it is the higher up in the organization you go, the more the checks and balances tight. So around me, I've built a lot of bylaws that restrict um, how much I can do if I chose to go rogue, because that's always a fear of something. I mean, look at Wounded Warriors. They had a lawyer take over and it just changed the whole dynamics of the of what was considered once a beautiful sure. uh, organization yep. to where only half a cent was going to our troops. Right. Um, okay. So we've, we've built it uh, so it never happens that way. That's actually a good point you make because I, I've participated in my professional life and still do. Uh, I'm on the executive board. Uh, I was on a few boards as well. Uh, and, you know, it's it's you need those checks and balances because that question always comes up. Right. When I was on, we did uh, it was for a children's museum to uh, have children go to art school. And we ran an art camp semi annually around school vacations other than Christmas vacation. So it was the winter vacation here in the northeast, February vacation and then the April vacation the spring vacation that the kids had and we and we ran an art camp and it was all hands on deck for the art camp for the volunteers uh or the voluntolds as i like to say right but you know we're not going to get into that right and, and and you know it was like you know you you need those checks and balances because at the end of the day you know it's a curriculum for kids to learn art and then you get into some families can't afford it who do you let go through and we receive letters and and I'm just like fill them up, like just like you know. And and I and I'm, um, not that Drew will be shocked, but I'm the loudest person on the board of every board I'm on. And I'm like, you know, just fill it up, like let's do it, like this is you know. And and you know, I'm sure that with 85% of your expenses being shipping, which I would imagine it would be around that number for sure. Uh, it just it just has to because you know we ship stuff when we go to conferences and it's ultra expensive and it's not like you can go to FedEx or whoever you use for a provider and you're like oh you're a nonprofit okay we're gonna give you a break on this nah nah oh you want to ship it to where what's in it and then you gotta package it make sure it's it it's it, it, it's a perishable product obviously and it gets and it gets packaged correctly and it's just it's just gotta be a nightmare and yeah i mean you, know, you gotta think the, the only organization we can use for mailing unless there's a private organization i don't know about that's affordable i do know there are private mailing companies that are out there that would ship a cigar but they're not affordable yep. uh, but if you're talking about FedEx or, or uh, UPS, we can't ship it to them because it's cigars. Oh, we're not a retailer. Friend, so the United States yeah. Postal Service, we're still allowed to ship it through there. Mm, um, yeah. And and that's another thing I have people say. Well, I go to my post office; they want to ship it to you guys. Well, tell that post office man or woman behind the desk if they try to say no, you can't. Tell them to go to the tobacco policy, which is only a page long or two pages long. Excuse me. And go the very last line of the whole policy that literally says cigars are still a mailable item. Um, I've been, I could tell you horror stories about these. Some of these people do not know the policies, um, you know, but nonetheless, that's a big deal. So you were asking about logistics as well, how it happens. A lot of people want to know how it happens. And to say what what's supposed to happen is every single month and in the month, um, our donation centers whether they have money or cash or both or 
cutters or lighters, whatever they've been donated, it all gets shipped to our Florida account, our Florida uh, stop, which is one of our individual's uh, houses. Actually, it's they moved to a his store that he works at. The owner of that cigar shop was very generous, allowing us to his location that's shipping point. And so now it's even more of a checks and balance because now we have it's not going to an actual uh, residence, going to a shop. And then he has then they let he lets employees help Robert once in a while actually do some of the packing and shipping. But Robert Allen is our chief operations and he gets all our requests. Then we vet them because not everybody realizes just because you're an APO that you are not a, that you're a U.S. service member. Sometimes you have contractors and APOs, Albanians, the Canadians, the British, whatever. Um, now, it doesn't say that that soldier or Marine or Air Force Airman get that Garage scar. Door. They don't donate it or they don't hand it to one of the contractors or one of the other countries that are embedded with them because they work together so closely. Once they get those cigars, it's theirs. But anyway, going back, all those donations go to down in Florida. And once there, we check them, make sure that if they're damaged, we don't send them damaged cigars. Now, if a foot of it's cracked, that's not damaged. I don't care who you are, you can light that out. But if the, if the whole wrapper's falling apart, that's not going to get put in there. If it's um, mold on there, which we've had, I'm sure you've seen the pictures. We've had a few cases where people ship, either shipping it wrong or they're shipping just moldy cigars. Sure. Uh, um, you know, and it, and it happens. Uh I'm not angry about it just because it's, you know, that's just the way it's going to happen sometimes. Uh, a lot of people don't know how to take care of the cigars, so we get them. They're very dry. And so we have the ability to rehabilitate. And uh, we've been very blessed to have uh, Bo- Bovida on board with us. It's, well, truthfully, they were with us before we were an actual entity. When we were just doing this on our own, trying to do the right thing, um, Bovida was with us. And having that humidity system, has been a, a godsend. Plus, like I said, it's all donated. So every package that goes out has been already pre-rehumidified, heavily humidified. Um, if it needs to be rehabilitated, we start at low levels and raise them. Um, they're all – we. so if we get 2,000 asses tomorrow, the boxes aren't all going to be 2,000 asses. We're going to break it up. Uh, we have, Let's say we have 2,000 asses, 2,000 asylum cigars. 2000 Haram Solomon cigars. We're going to mix them up that way. Everybody's in those boxes. Yep. Um, yeah. And, you know, now it's even harder to do we, Now we don't, it's not as hard to do that anymore because we don't get those big manufactured donations anymore. So we do have a crazy assortment of, of cigars that come in, which I think is a good thing. I think it's a great thing for the industry um, because that, that's building your next client. You've got your next cigar smoker who that cigar meant so much to them. They're coming home and they're looking for that cigar they smoked while they're in deployment. They're looking for that cigar shop that was one of the people, the reason they got a cigar. Um, so you're building your clientele. So while cigarettes and snuff is going down a straight down arrow, cigars in America has a slight decline, but in the military, it's gone straight up uh, because we've had such a huge cessation of cigarettes and snuff in the military that they haven't touched all the neat traditions when they're wrapped around cigars. Um, so you're, those are our new, those are our future cigar smokers, um, which it should make companies want to even, you know, on a monetary business side, that should be, make you want to have donations go to our troops. Right. Um, so, uh, so anyway, so then we have major events like cigar and spirits where I saw Joe, I think last, um, those are big festival, cats festival, cigar fest, uh, you know, smoking in the Carolinas, Stogie's underground or, or Stogie's, uh, world-class cigar festival, underground cigar festival. These are big, big major events. We have a lot of other ones. Like we have club events, uh, WHC club out of Houston is so far our, our leader in donations every year from our clubs. Which is saying thing, saying saying something because we have some amazing clubs that has us as either their priority charity or their secondary charity. The Smoking Shields, which is an all uh, police and military based uh, cigar club, you know when they have meetings every month, you you must go buy two cigars at least from that shop, and one of them was always donated to the troops. So these men and women are doing great things for us. But like the WHC, they 
they do a major called the month of September, and we uh, get a lot of cigar shops involved, and they'll have competitions. And we just started calling a competition now. We just called the most patriotic cigar shop in Texas. Um, so that was our first year to actually make that a formal competition between all the cigar shops that are a part of this. And next year it's going to expand quite a bit outside of Houston where it's opened up to, you know, Dallas, San Antonio, all the other markets. And we've got a pretty cool system, how to judge it. That's going to be where even the smallest of cigar shops can compete against the biggest of cigar shops. Um, so these are fun programs we've gotten working on. And again, it's more marketing for those cigar shops to grow them. Uh, Cause we were firm believers are growing. We're going to grow. Mm -hmm. So as those big major events come in, those go away all the way to New Jersey. Um, so if you ever look at the brochure, and I, I say this because some people may ever get confused. If you see the brochure and you see the address, it's in Florida. But if you're in a major festival, you just have to be helping me or something, boxing up stuff. And that festival is going to send the cigars for us. It goes to New Jersey where we have an amazing, uh, another amazing family, uh, Peter Totaro. And he, uh, he will turn around and do the same thing Robert does. Robert will give him the uh, vetted troops information, and then those get sent out by Peter and his family. Um, so we have some amazing volunteers, and then going to checks and balances. The only two people ever allowed to walk out of a cigar shop with the donations is Peter and Robert, because let's face it, why are they going to ship it to their own home? Uh, I don't even walk out of the cigar shops with donations uh, because it's, again, another checks and balance. Yep. You know, people yep. say, what did you do about the cash? Well, the store writes out a check out of, out of their checkbook for that cash. So that now it's written to cigars for warriors. So the only where that money is going to go is straight into the bank account. Right. Um, then I get those questions a lot. They ask us what our administration cost is. You know, we're, you know, people have gotten a lot smarter, which is a good thing. They, they start studying their charities, which is a good thing. I always yeah. tell people that uh, I always tell our new volunteers, Study us first before you volunteer, before so you know that's what you want to support. And I, I bring that up because there's an amazing organization called GuideStar.org. Yes, yep, absolutely. And GuideStar.org is the premier watchdog group for all nonprofits. And, they, and the second strongest one just merged with them a year ago. Uh, don't get me lying, I can't remember the name of that company, but it doesn't really matter at this point. And they, uh, to get on there in a positive way, because they're the ones that broke out in 2016, how Wounded Warriors only half a penny was going to the troops, uh, where 88 cents was going to salaries, and they were doing team meetings in Bahamas and crazy stuff. Um, now, don't get me wrong, there's, some, there's a handful of troops that get helped, but for an organization that started out so pure and wonderful, uh, there's a lot, of this, a lot of this military folks that don't have a lot of love for that organization. And again, people don't know this because they're not studying where the money is, but people nowadays are getting smarter about it. And Guy Star is a great place. Um, then did on it in a good way. It's an act of God. It takes a lot of work. And because uh, you're, if you're on there in a good way where you're a bronze, silver, gold, or platinum, that means you're very transparent. And so what I always like to say is we're probably the most non politically correct charity on the planet. Uh, we're definitely one of the most we're in the top less than 0.5% of most transparent charities. Yep. We are pl platinum uh, on guidestar.org, which is a lot of work, a lot of metrics. And to stay platinum, you have to basically keep doing all this stuff every year. You, just because you make it one year doesn't mean you stay there. Right. Right, you you have to submit you have to submit their guideline processes uh, there for some of the Story Geeks listeners that that don't know that uh, if you go to guidestar.org you can look up any of your favorite charities and they're actually ranked and you guys are have phenomenal status which I think is a smart move uh, because like you said the the um, people who donate to charities want to make sure that it's going to the cause that it's going for sure absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I think it's great. I want to personally encourage the Stogie Geeks listener to go to cigarsforwarriors.org. Uh, if, if you forget that, stogiegeeks.com forward slash 314. That's today's episode. The URL is there. You can click on photos, see all the troops enjoying the fruits of the labor that 
everyone does at Cigars for Warriors. You can sign up for the newsletter. Also, there's a special day that is coming up, so your timing is perfect. We have, yeah. what, Black Friday, uh, uh, Thanksgiving, and then you have Cyber Monday. And right after Cyber Monday is a huge nonprofit online donating uh, uh, push uh, called Giving Tuesday. So you can uh, go to scottsforwarriors.com if you want to donate, get involved, or contact your local brick and mortar and uh, see if they're involved. Or maybe, you know, help them out and get involved on a local level and maybe take their participation to another level as well if you don't want to take on the burden of yourself uh, to actually do that. Or if you want to get involved with your local brick and mortar or some of the retailers uh, definitely, it all starts when you go to cigarsforwarriors.org to uh, do that, you know, for sure. Absolutely. I think it's important. Uh, uh, Storm, anything you want to send us as far as an update or whichever in your travels and you want us to announce on the show, just flash me an e email. The invitation's always open. I appreciate that. Um, you know, now do forgive us for our website. It is very dated. It's all good. Um, it's all good. We are we are in the process of rebuilding it into a progressive web app, which I'm very excited about. That means you can have you can put your app on the phone, and it's like a hybrid. I'm I'm learning all this. I'm not a I'm not a website guy. Um, I barely can turn my computer on, um, but <laughs> they, you know it's a progressive web. It's like a hybrid between an app and a website. Yep. And I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's going to open up a lot of territories that we've been trying to get done for, you know, three, four years. Uh, but as you said, you said it right on the spot. Um, this is a good time. We always try to send more during Christmas because uh, willing to send packages knowing that it's not going to get there on Christmas. It's going to get there after the first year because uh, let's face it, those, those three, four weeks at the end of the year, beginning of the year, can be some of the most depressing if you're not at home with family. For sure. So we try to do as much as we possibly can. In fact, we'll unload as we'll unload almost all our any kind of storage where we any kind of product that we may get ahead on, we'll unload it, um, and we'll just try to <laughs> find the stuff in January, in February, March. Uh, you know. So again, that comes from a lot of our clubs, our big festivals at the beginning of the year that really take us. And support us because we, we we go way over over the cause uh, and and in the at the end of the year yeah uh, so yep. again you said it perfectly uh, the, you know, Amazon if you when you're buying go to, they have a smiles program we're in there so if you want to choose cigars for warriors whenever you buy anything make sure you're on the smile.amazon.com and that's their charity program which you can choose any charity you want. Um, so you're welcome. We'd love you to choose Cigars for Warriors. And uh, they'll be sending us money on a monthly basis when you shop. Right. Uh, so you're not even you're not even have to do anything outside of maybe typing the word smile, which, you know, puts you in a little extra effort. That's literally it. <laughs> and, and, and you can, you know, help our charity. You can make help the cause by shopping for us. Right. Right. Absolutely. For you Stogie Geeks listeners, uh, full disclosure outside of uh, Stogie Geeks and Security Weekly here, I do work with nonprofits for my business. So I am a member of GuideStar. Uh, so if you need the report pulled up uh, for the Cigars for Warriors, I can send it to you in a PDF form. All you got to do is email me at joeh at stogiegeeks.com if you need a little bit more elaboration as to what we were talking about when it gets into that because – um, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you guys went through that accreditation. It just it just basically puts a staple within your 501c3 saying, hey, man, we're legit and, and we yeah. have to go through a processes for that. I also want to encourage the story geek geeks listener and uh, to go to cigarsforwarriors.org. And then also Storm, D, uh, right before we had you on, uh, we had Dean, uh, founder for Epic Cigars. And he said to make sure that he, uh, I tell you that he said hi, and he said he's, he's, he's looking forward to working with you as well, uh, not only from the past work that he's done, but for 2020 as well. So um, Dean's, Dean is an amazing guy. I've really got to enjoy knowing him over the years. Um, I've known him for quite a while now and worked with him on many occasions. Um, he, he's always trying to push 
envelope as far as helping us as CFW is a big supporter. Uh, he's one, a really neat guy. Yeah. You know, and I, and that brings up another point, our manufacturers, just because you think that they're not doing, they can't do anything for it because the FDA, many of them are still doing a lot for sure. Uh, yeah. Without these guys, we wouldn't be here. We would, you know, Drew Estate was the first manufacturer to jump on board with us. Mainly it was Jonathan Drew himself. Um, hell, he put me through hell just to get him to get on board with us. Yeah, I'm but sure. he <laughs> he uh, he he wanted to see our bylaws. I mean, he's he's he has a law degree, so he wanted to see our bylaws. Right. He wanted to see our you know our associations. He wanted to see my ethics policy. You know, all our conflict of interest policies. Uh, he mm-hmm. wanted to meet all the board of directors because. He'll tell the story. He, he, they they were donating to everything, anything military related. They were just donating right, without really checking, and he realized he had no idea where, you know, his money was. He wanted to support the troops, but you know, the sad day is there's a lot of people who are not so honest. Right, right. Um, right. So Absolutely. I, I appreciated him doing that um, because then he knows he has a faith, and we know that we had that trust now because we built it by being very open and transparent with them. And I always like to say, you know, because of Drew Estate, he had the balls enough to bring us into the trade show, which is IPCPR. And people don't realize why that, what that, the significance of that is before us and never, well, it's never still been another charity at the trade show. It's only been us since 2012. But the day he let us go in there, he asked me one day, very beginning, what can I do besides money and cigars? We're going to get cigars from us. Um, no matter what, we're going to figure out how to get you money. No matter what, what else can I do? I said, bring us to the trade show. Nice. And he said, he said, absolutely no way. That's, that's a dumb idea. I don't know why you want to do it. So I said, just trust me on this one thing. And he had the balls enough to do it. Yeah. And it basically put us 10 years ahead of the game by being there. And you said it right, Joe, the word legit. Yep. Uh, it made us legitimate overnight. You can still have a 501c3 and not always be legit. You, yep. You, or you're doing everything by your bylaws and by the law, but the money isn't going there. You know, there's several charities like that. Um, so by them doing it, it basically legitimized us for the whole industry, uh, legitimized us for other manufacturers, legitimized us for all the cigar shops. Um, so that was pretty powerful. And then having some other amazing, you know, Famous Smokes, Cigars International, you know, Famous Smokes, the first donation center to donate more, you know, donate out of their own stock. And, and before FDA, they were donating five, six thousand cigars every single month. Right, right. Cigars International were giving us a single donation of twenty five, thirty thousand cigars a year. Um, you know, leave a cigar, thirty three thousand cigars. Uh, just amazing numbers some of these companies were doing for us. Uh, so, just because these manufacturers cannot donate the way they used to traditionally did. There's a lot of ways these guys are still supporting us. There's a lot of loopholes. Uh, they, a lot of them support us with swag because we make 90% of our money's come from raffles. Sure. Believe it or not. Sure. So Absolutely. So if you ever see us donate a cigar or a dollar, at, you think that's not going to, you know, oh, that's what I was going to tell you earlier is that I have donate centers call me and, be, and say, hey, man, I only got five cigars. I'm embarrassed. I want to wait until next month to ship it. Those five cigars mean a lot. If we had, Every donation center shipping us their five cigars, that takes care of half our our our, our packages going out. That's a good so, that, that's a good yeah. point that you make for sure. You would definitely have to participate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And I want to encourage the the, the, the Story Geeks listener and some of the retailers get involved with within this organization. Storm, I want to invite you back to Story Geeks. We definitely need a part two of this so uh keep in touch let me know your schedule over january february if we could continue the conversation i think it's 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 much needed for sure you know yeah january is january is my lightest month of the year so oh then 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 let's let's talk if, if next uh, let, 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 let's talk via email and get you back on it and, and let's hone in a date uh, in January to, to get you back and, and kick off the year and continue the conversation because there's so much more that I want to talk to you about there but um, you know unfortunately we, we we're, we're, <laughs> we're blasting we're, we're wrapping up this episode so Storm I want to thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks Stogie Geeks make sure that you stay tuned Storm said he'll be back in January and there's only four months in Jan- uh, four weeks in January so the listener's going to hold you to it Storm 
You know, right. <laughs> they'll be like, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> anyway, go to cigarsforwarriors.org. Check them out. Get involved. Drew and myself want to wish you guys a happy Thanksgiving. Enjoy happy your family. Enjoy your stogies. Uh, Storm, thank you for your service and thank you for appearing on Stogie Geeks. I want to let the Stogie Geeks listen and remember we can keep the conversation going all week long. All you got to do is go to stogiegeeks.com. Visit us on facebook.com forward slash stogiegeeks. Email Drew at stogiegeeks.com or me, Joe H, at stogiegeeks.com. But I want to remind you that behind every cigar, there's a story worth knowing. Shop local, get out there and support your local brick and mortar. Special thanks to J.C. Newman, Havana Cigar Club, Placencia Cigars, and McAuliffe Cigars. Stoya Geeks, Drew and I, happy Thanksgiving. Peace. We're out. We'll see you.